charge. It's not a charge. That's it's we love it. I get to see beers. I have horses. Just you be one that gets a burger. Wow. Hey, guess what? All this exists. There are stars at night. It's quiet. You can drink coyotes at night. It's great. When I drive out there, it's going to be on some pretty nuclear layers and make some sound like that. Stop. <laughs> If I drive it, I it's an hour. From here. If Alan drives it, it's 35 minutes. You're actually, so I did, I had someone pick up that happened to go y'all's way. Mm -hmm. You're here from Brian. Yeah, from where? I ride with him. You got, you got the giant tool pack. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And if, if you are in his way, he will put you out of his way. He was on his That dude's last name is the thing. We ready to? No, we're not ready. Okay. The meeting is called to order of the Scammy County Compsy Board, December 6, 2023. Um, Madam Secretary, do we have a declaration of quorum this morning? Yes, sir, Mr. Chairman. With six members present, we do. Okay. Do we have proof of publication of the meeting? In yes, advance. sir, Mr. Chairman. It was published on Thursday, November 30th, 2023 in the Escambia County Sun Press. Thank you very much. I entertain a motion for approval of the minutes as listed from the October 4th meeting and November 1 meeting. Motion to approve. Second. I have a motion and a second. All in favor, say aye. 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 Raise your right hand. All opposed, same sign. Seeing none, hearing none, motion is approved. Do we have anyone signed up for the public forum session this morning? I did not receive any sign-up sheets for public forum. Is anyone here that forgot, failed, would like to sign up? Thank you for saying no. We'll move on. Board, <laughs> Board Secretary Status Report. Yes, sir, Mr. Chairman. Um, I don't have much for the board for this item except that we had a request made by Kenny Robinson, all-inclusive. He was previously approved to take the examination for general contractor. He is requesting that the board allow him to step down to building contractor for examination. From general to building? Yes, sir. This is for the local or for state? Uh, local level. Local level. Mm-hmm. Have we looked at his application? Do what, sir? Have we had an opportunity to look at it? You did review his application previously for general contractor, and you found that he 
you approved him we to approved take him. the examination. He's just asking. He's to step asking down to one step level. down one level. Shouldn't have been a problem with that. Any need a motion for that? Yeah, I need a motion for someone to. What I'm sorry, what was his name? Let me write it down. Kenny Robinson. Kenny Robinson. I'll entertain a motion for Kenny Robinson to move from registered general contractor to registered building contractor for his application. For examination. For examination. I'll make that motion. I have a motion. I have a second. All in favor, raise your right hand. All opposed, same sign. Seeing none, motion is approved. Thank you, Madam Secretary. Contractor applications. We have Mr. David Swindle. Uh, yes, sir. We, our first applicant is Mr. David Swindell. If you will step to the podium, sir, state your name and address uh, for the record. David Swindell, 420 Pemberton Lane, Cantonment, Florida. Uh, Mr. Swindell is coming to apply for testing for Roofing Unlimited. Um, after reviewing his application, staff does recommend approval. I'll make a motion to approve. Second. I have a motion and a second. Do I have any discussion? All in favor, raise your right hand. All opposed, same sign. Seeing none, hearing none. Mr. Swindell, you have been approved to apply for the uh, uh, testing for this. Yes, sir. And in the words of the man who sat before me, we don't want to see you come back, which means do a good job. Likewise. Thank you. Appreciate Thank you, it, sir. Next, we have Mr. David Mayo. Board members, uh, Mr. David Mayo is coming for reinstatement of a delinquent license, which lapsed beyond three years. Uh, Mr. Mayo, if you will step forward and please state your name right. and address for the record. David Mayo, 801 Watson Avenue, Pensacola, Florida. Mr. Mayo, if you could go ahead and, and let the board know the reason for your delinquency. Um, I thought I was going to retire. <laughs> I stayed to retire two weeks. Uh, then come back and went to work for another company uh, for four and a half years and um, Got me two new partners and I'm ready to go back to my own stuff So that's, that's what happened Good deal You guys had a chance to look at applications. Yeah, what's the board recommendation? Staff does not give a recommendation in regard to delinquency or yeah. reciprocity. So is all, all the uh, fine of the penalties, not penalties, but fees be paid? If he should be approved to reinstate, then he would pay the fines. Fees. We have no priors? No prior issues with reinstatement? N not to my knowledge, no. No, sir, we do not. Okay. So I'll make a motion to approve. Okay. Do I have a second? And those in favor, raise your right hand. Those opposed, same sign. Seeing none, hearing none. Motion been approved. All Thank right. you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, sir. Mm -hmm. Okay. Moving along to the probable calls hearing. Yes, sir, Mr. Chairman. Item 8-1 is Jonathan M. Rushing doing business as Elevate Roofing and Exteriors, Inc., State Certified License Number CCC 133-1339, Contractor Competency Board Complaint Number 230669-COM. It's in regard to Rosemary Aponte, the homeowner complainant at 1425 Little Creek Drive, Pensacola, Florida, 32506. <coughs> Proper notice was sent to the respondent. Uh, Ms. Aponte, are you present today? And are you going to provide testimony for this hearing? Yes. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Rushing, are you present today? He's appearing by phone. Mr. Okay. Rushing is, is actually appearing uh, via phone okay. uh, today. Um, at this time, I'm going to have both parties sworn in. Mr. Rushing, can you hear? Yes, I can. Thank you. And Mr. Rushing? Yes. I don't think he heard what she said. I don't think he heard her. Did you hear um, 
the court reporter swear you in, Mr. Rushing? Yes, I did. And do you agree? I do. And just a note for the board, Ms. Reber was also sworn and will remain sworn for this entire meeting. Uh, Ms. Reber, was a formal complaint filed with the board and on what date was it filed? Yes, there was on June 12th, 2023. And were you able to communicate with the complainant about the case? Yes, I was. Were you able to communicate with the respondent about the case? Yes, I was. Did the complainant provide any supporting documentation and was it attached to the agenda as backup? She did and it is attached. And did the respondent provide any supporting documentation and is it attached to the agenda as backup? Uh, yes, and, and it is all attached. Uh, were permits obtained? If so, when and what are their current status? A permit was obtained for a re-roof on um, January 17th, 2023. Uh, wait a minute, I'm sorry. Okay, failed inspection. Okay, yes, I'm sorry. January 17th, 2023 with a failed inspection on January 18th and January 23rd, and that was just for missing um, documentation and paperwork. A final past inspection by affidavit was done on January 27th, 2023. However, Escambia County building official Tim Tolbert rescinded the past inspection based on the results of a courtesy <coughs> inspection done by Inspector Whitmire um, in preparation for um, an, an investigation of this case. At this time, staff would request that the documentation attached to the agenda as backup be moved into evidence. So moved. I have a motion to have a second. Second. All in favor, raise your right hand. Oppose, same sign. Seeing none, hear none. Motions approved to enter evidence in the file. Ms. Reber, were you able to assign any alleged violations to the case? If so, please state each and your justification. Yes, I was. Code section 1837C1. Um, that's based on uh, the things that were identified in the failed roofing inspection have yet to be corrected. Ms. Aponte, this is your opportunity to address the board. If you could come to the podium, state your name and address for the record, and then um, share about this case. My name is Rosemary Aponte. I live at 1425 Little Creek Drive, Pensacola, Florida. We, we agreed on the work right after Hurricane Sally. Um, they said they were gonna come out, they were gonna fix everything. Um, they showed up January 13th on a Friday of 2023. Um, didn't have any notice, they just, I heard scraping. When I looked, I saw all the trucks and everything outside. I figured, okay, good, it's getting done. Well, I sat a cooler outside filled with sodas and a box full of potato chips so that the people, you know, they could take a break and eat something. 40 minutes later, I go to look at the back and I see my cooler sitting in the back. I've got an in-ground pool back there and a fenced in, well, screened in porch. There's no soda in it, there's ice, but they're loading Corona beers into the thing and I'm watching the kid fill his pockets and head up on the roof. I said, okay. Well, my son, when they delivered all of the wood and all of that stuff, he told me, go out there, mom, and count the pieces of wood, the flat wood. Plywood. Yeah. And I went out there, and they said it was 17. It was nine. Okay? So then I didn't say anything. They, I asked the guy about screening in all of the wood itself that's on the frame of the porch is the original wood that was up there. The only thing they were to do was replace the overhead, okay? One on each side, because in the middle it's aluminum. Okay, they my, I had wood sitting out in the back there because I was having the fence also repaired. And you know how the wood gets warped, so you set it to the side so you don't, they were using that wood. I've got a picture on my tablet that will show you them taking the plywood, loading it on a white van, 
okay? I've got another picture showing you that they loaded, they took the shingles in Excuse the white me. van. Excuse me, Miss Rosemary. We have some photographs up, if that would help you, so that you can... That's the front of the house. If you look at the piece of wood that's coming across, I watched the same kid that loaded his pockets with the beer, with a piece of board, a screwdriver and a hammer, banging a wedge, okay, shoving it up there. That's not, I'm not a contractor, but I don't think that that's the way it's supposed to be done, <laughs> okay? Okay, then if you look at all of this, all of the wood and the uh, hurricane clips were already up there. All they had to do was replace. If you look at the other side, you'll see that they used some of the original plywood on the other side, which I showed him. Okay, look at the wood. It's all warped. It's not even joined together, not even in the, the section that's bracing it. Okay. So then when Mr. Soffit came out, started, started, Sutton, I'm sorry, he came out and he did the inspection, and he said, well, before we put up any gutters, there's a lot of work that still needs to be done. And I showed him all of the pictures. He copied. He took all of the pictures with his phone. He copied them. Well, he came back in after he looked at the front and he said, uh, I already took care of that wood situation. We're going to go ahead and get the rest of this fixed. Didn't hear nothing. Except for getting messages telling me that if I didn't pay them the, the 2700 for the wood, that I wasn't getting my warranty and nothing else was being done, okay? That is on paperwork that I sent, saying that if I didn't pay them that money, I was not getting the warranty on the work they did. Then the next thing I knew, they were out there putting up the gutters, nothing on the work. I've got seven people that can testify that December of 22, we were sitting in my living room, okay, with the fire going for Christmas. I can't, it's leaking water. If that would have been something that would have not have been destroyed by the hurricane, it would have been on the complaint, on the settlement. There was no mention of that. Well, the air conditioning, it was leaking. I had to tell him to come and reset the thing because it was, it was on the floor. I, it, 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 this has been a, a nightmare. It's been a nightmare. And here it is, what, a year later, and my house is still the way it was. I've got a towel sitting on top of my air conditioning unit. I've got a towel sitting in my fireplace to get the wood, the water that's coming down through them. Brendan came out, he looked at it. He said, uh, I'm, we're gonna send somebody out here to work on this, the, air, the roof for the chimney and the air conditioning, nothing, nothing. I haven't heard nothing other than nasty grams that they want their 2700. And then the remark was made by Brendan to us, oh, the Mexican was fired. And I've got my witness that was here that he, he showed him his cell phone and said the Mexicans were fired. It's, it's been a nightmare. It's been a nightmare. So I've got the, the outside of the roof, the, the, all of the trim, the fireplace, the air conditioning, okay, and nothing. And they put up the gutters. But I've got pictures of them taking that wood. And when I asked him about the shingles, he took the, 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 the I said, where's the rest of the shingles? He said, oh, we're taking them to a job in pace. And this was Julio, the guy who was in charge, the supervisor. They didn't have a problem with blowing stuff into my pool. I had to have my liner replaced, uh, nails on the bottom of the pool. Uh, I'm just so done. I trust people the same way I want. I'm a nurse. I have been a nurse for 40 years. I want people to trust me. I take care of people. They, to treat somebody like this that honestly trusted and thought that you all were honest, I, I don't know what this world is coming to. Did I send enough of my I'm, I'm starting to get. It's okay. You're fine. So I'm starting to get really. I just. We have some questions. I, I just want to provide a little bit of clarification to the board. You'll notice that there are two cases 
that right. encompass this particular right. um, situation. One is for the roof portion of it, and then the other is for um, items related to more structural with the right. building contractor's license. So just to make sure everybody understands, there's, there's two components to this case, um, which are separated into two separate hearings today. This one is just for the roofing section that's correct. The that roof covering. Pertain, right, right. Um, this one pertains solely to the roof covering. Right. And that would be the, the leaking. Right, right. Anybody up here have any questions for Mr. Ponte? Is the roof leaking now? The, the roof itself is not leaking other than over by the air conditioner. He took pictures of the air conditioner. I have a towel sitting on top of the inside unit. The one that's in the house? Is the air conditioning leaking or the roof? It's coming from the roof. It's coming from the top. And they have not addressed that yet? No. And the fireplace, the water is coming down from inside. I've got a towel sitting on the log holder. Okay. It's, mm. did, did they do anything to cover up your pool or, or anything in that room? No. No. They did didn't cover anything up on the pool. Okay, I watched him blowing with the blower on the back porch, blowing this stuff off of the back porch onto the area where the pool was, and I had the liner changed out. And, <laughs> oh, it's been, like I said, a nightmare. Did you address, did you address the pool no, liner No, because with I them? thought to myself, I'm, I'm more worried about the house. I can change out the liner in the pool. You know, I'm more worried about the, the house itself. I can't live in the pool, you know. <laughs> no, I, I understand. Ms. Ponte, looking at your contract here that is part of our public record here that we've submitted, it does not give a, an exact quantity of shingles nor plywood. I only tell you that to say that any leftover shingles or plywood that they took with them may have been because they had extra on the job and all that they said here was in the contract that they would re-roof, take care of the damaged plywood that was there. So if, if I was on a job and I have possible 12 sheets, but I only use eight, those four but go But why back. were they charging me for 17? Well, I, I don't see it. That's what I'm saying. It's not on your contract that there's a breakdown of, I don't see it. it I could be wrong. I don't see a quantity of shingles, how many squares. Yeah. Neither do I see how many sheets of the Plywood. original bill they sent told me that they were billing me for 17 oh, okay. sheets. Right. So I'd like to draw your attention to oh, the Oh, it's a different now. one. That's on the insurance claim there. Mm -hmm. her, their contract with her does not have that on it. This is actually from Elevate Roofing and Exteriors. That's the invoice um, for the project. That's for the insurance claim. Yeah, I see that now. And, so and yes, the, the total initial did. claim is 37, but they only charged her 31-2, and their contract with her does not have that on there. The one that she signed, which is contract, right. yeah, right there. I, it's a fine line of the legality is out of my realm. I'm just making a mention that that could be why there was pieces taken off is because their contract does not say we will install exact amount of pieces or leave the material there, et cetera. Yes, and um, just for the, we haven't heard from the contractor yet, right, right. and he may have an explanation right. for that. Okay. So, might want to hold on to you get all the evidence on I'm that one. I'm just making a mention of that to her. To just, there's an area there that might be a little great with that. But the bottom line is, the code violations that has been listed here have been found by an inspector that went back out, and Mr. Tim revoked the uh, final. Gotcha. Okay. Yes, sir. Yes, Any sir. other questions? Not for this. this part? Okay. Thank you, Ms. Ponte. Thank you. And we'll hear from the uh, uh, roofer, the building con. Mr. Rushing, can you hear me? Mr. Rushing. Mr. Rushing. I'm sorry. I had it on mute. I, I'm sorry. I didn't realize it was muted. Yes, sir. If you could go ahead and state your name and address for the record, please. Yes, my name is Jonathan Rushing. I live at 375 Chalk Maple Road in China Grove, North Carolina, 28027. Yes, sir. And if you, this is your opportunity to address the board in regard to the roof covering portion 
of this case? Correct. So we were contracted through an insurance claim uh, from the from the hurricane to go out and help Miss Aponte with her with her roofing work there. Uh, when we did arrive, as as to the allegations of um, you know liquor on site, that has never been a policy of ours. We've never allowed it with this crew that we've uh, as a subcontractor crew we had. We've never had a complaint before. We asked them about that complaint. They said that they didn't do it, but I'm, I, you know, I just have, you know, what Miss Aponte told us, uh, and so, you know, because we were we were very quick to that's a that's a very big no no in our in our uh, company that you know we're not going to have drugs or alcohol on site, and then so in the progress of the work when we took back the coverings uh, that were present there, her old roof. There was substantial uh, wood rot all across her back porch, across many of the eaves, uh, and then the chimney itself was completely rotted. All of the surrounding uh, things there, and so uh, as per our contract, we started uh, going to get the necessary wood to replace all of the. Because I, I don't know if you guys have the picture records. But you can see on if you do, you can see on that back porch it was completely some of the worst rot that we'd ever seen, uh, all the way through the rafter tails, all the way through the the plywood, everything else that was uh, surrounding it. So we did an extensive repair of the plywood and some of the rafter tails and fascia, Uh, and then you know we dried in the roof. We've got all the progress photos. I've got all the photos of showing the wood rot that was replaced. It's all time stamped and, and address stamped. Uh, we went through and made sure we took care of all of those wood, you know, that wood rot. And then we tried to, uh, you know, rewrap the chimney with uh, wood. I did see that, and of course, well, we'll cover that in the next hearing, I guess, on the structural here. But we uh, reflashed the chimney the only thing that we didn't do at the chimney is she has a cap on top of the chimney that is a, a, a flue cap uh, that's you know sheet metal with a with a cap there. You can see in the pictures that was there. We tried to kind of take off the old one so we could redo the wood and then put that back on as was as it was. Uh, and so then we went ahead and, and finished all of the roof. Um, we got calls from Miss Aponte that, you know, she was concerned about some of the work. Um, so we sent the crew back out and when they went back out, Miss Aponte refused them, said that she did not want that crew there, uh, because they had, you know, in her estimation, they had been drinking and, you know, done stuff there. So we were trying to get another crew, uh, in place to go out and, and take care of the work since we refused access. So we finally did, we did send Mr. Uh, Sutton out there, one of our reps who went out, uh, as she said, took pictures of everything, made known to me that there were some things we needed to take care of. We sent another gentleman out there. She's talked, she's talked about who's also a, a labor force named Brendan. And Brendan did go out and try to address any of the leak issues that were found. His findings were as he felt like the cap itself was leaking, not around the flashing that we had done on the roof, but the actual old cap was leaking. Um, and maybe due to the movement of us trying to take it off and put it back, we felt like that the, the sheet metal, the, where the sheet metal is and the cap hits, we felt like there was a leak that was possibly happening there, but we couldn't find any leaks around the flashing points that we did around the chimney. We didn't see any problems at all where we had kind of put a cricket in. We had, we had done all the flashing, but to be, to do our best, we did try to go back and readdress any of the roofing issues that we felt like were, were a problem. Uh, as far as the air condition, I'm not quite sure what, what's happening there. I'm not sure what that is. Um, I was aware of the chimney leak that w- was happening, but I'm not, I'm not quite uh, understanding what's going on with the with the AC that she is speaking of. As far as the um, debris in the pool, 
we did um, we did see that there had been some debris that had gotten into the pool. Uh, we did speak to her according to Mr. Sutton. He said that according to Ms. Ponte, it wasn't a wasn't a large issue because she was going to be replacing that liner anyway. Uh, now that's what he that's what he told us. Um, and so, um, as far as you know, and I know we'll get into this in the other hearing on the structural things, but as far as that went, you know, there was an extensive structural things that had to happen there as far as the, the soffits around that back porch, especially that were, you know, were addressed. And, um, there was some things that were, were noted. Now, when we finished the roof, you know, we were trying to get paid for the, for the roof and to get her to pay for the wood that was as in our contract, there's a certain amount that's already pre allotted that she's supposed to pay for wood repair. There were some discrepancies between what we thought it was and what we've been told by the subcontractor it was and then what she said it was and we adjusted that worksheet and we adjusted that bill to what she thought it was because uh, we didn't want to be guilty of any you know in any way of feeling like we were overcharging anyone so that has been adjusted uh, to what she thought it was in subsequent invoices that we sent uh, when we when we tried to collect that wood cost, uh, which there's no doubt, I mean, the pictures are clear, there was substantial wood cost there. Um, she did not want to pay it. And so uh, I had a general manager, he's, he's no longer with me, but at the time he made what I felt like was an erroneous mistake to say that we would not fulfill our contract until she paid her wood cost. But I, when I found that out, I did explain to him that we are under obligation to fulfill our contract and then she's under obligation to pay. We can't withhold work because she didn't, we can't not fulfill the contract because of some extra, uh, wood rot. So that's why we went ahead and did come out and do the gutters as well. So as of today, we fulfilled the contract that you guys have in front of you. We did the roof, we did the roof and we did the gutters. We fulfilled the contract and we're, we were asking for, her to pay for the extra wood expense. She's yet to pay any of the extra wood expense whatsoever. Uh, we have fulfilled the contract in full. And we, um, of course, you know, I kind of explained to Ms. Uh, Reber uh, when she brought the, the uh, and I did respond to the complaint, that, you know, there was a concern at one time. Uh, we were talking about addressing some of the structural things um, and she had indicated she had a, uh, I believe it was a son that was a contractor that might be willing to, to do it. And then she came back and said, no, she didn't want to use him. She wanted us to fix it. So that's a correction. You know, that was Miss Aponte, not this is Miss Reber, not me. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> okay. Sorry, Miss Reber. So anyway, I, um, I just wanted us to, you know, what I had. Uh, you know, we have done the roof. Uh, the roof is in excellent condition as far as I'm, you know, anything that we have seen. We feel like this, the there's some structural issues with that chimney and with some of the soffit that we attribute that there needs to be some repair to, but that's in a separate hearing. As far as the roof itself, I feel like the roof has been, uh, has been installed correctly. I feel like we have all the... Uh, evidentiary proof in our pictures to show that it has um, there. I was a little surprised. I didn't realize that the, the final inspection had been rescinded. And of course, since it has been, we will go out and take care of whatever violations we feel like, you know, have been assessed to, to try to rectify it. But uh, the chimney was a complete, it was about to collapse when we, when we took the roof off and it has we have the picture showing that the wood was all rotted the whole thing was just just, just a, a a rot and so we took all that off we reinforced it put back all the wood reflashed everything around it ice and water shield all around the, sh the chimney and then put the cap that was on the chimney back on it as it was um as you know there was nothing in our our contract that said anything about the cap there had never been a problem with the cap before and so as far as the roofing portion of this uh, hearing, I, I feel fairly confident that we've performed um, as we should. So 
you know, that was as far as the allegations of them drinking on I've, I've not been able to substantiate it I'm not saying that she's lying I'm sure that you know she believes that there were coronas going in that that deal it's the first time that has ever happened with this crew on any job sites we've had but you know things can happen and if it is I'm, I'm deeply sorry for it we just never could cooperate it or substantiate it otherwise but because of her belief in that we were not allowed to use that crew anymore um, to go do the repairs that she claimed were were necessary after the roof was complete. And Mr. Rushing, just so you know, the photos that you presented with the wood rot, that's been up on the board as you were discussing it for the board to see. Okay. Okay, great. So thank you so much. And uh, and I apologize, I couldn't be there uh, but in person, but uh, that is, and I'm willing to answer any questions or concerns that anybody has, but uh, we, we don't want to leave any customer uh, in this situation to, to be at this to be at this point of the process. There's obviously been a breakdown and a failure of some degree on our part, and I, I'm apologizing you know in advance for any of that. We don't. I've talked with Miss Abonte personally, and uh, I'm uh, I'm I'm very sorry that we're even having to be at this point. But at the same time, I don't want us to be to be blamed. Uh, for things that I really don't feel are our, you know, our fault in that, you know, I feel like we did a good job in, in covering a, a roof and repairing a roof that was completely, uh, was, was in, in a disarray after the storm and due to some, you know, ongoing issues of rot and, and leak points. Thank you, Mr. Rushing. Um, the board, anybody have questions on this? I know that we have an inspector. Can you put the inspector's report up for us? Yes, sir. If you'd like, I can read it so that Mr. Yes. Uh, Rushing, Rushing can, can hear. hear. Yep. And it's an email yes. that was sent to Mr. Rushing um, that Inspector Bobby Whitmire conducted a courtesy inspection at Miss Aponte's home located at 1425 Little Creek Drive. Bobby advised that there needs to be an alteration permit pulled, which is for the other hearing, not for this one, um, for the work that was performed on soffit and fascia. Uh, Bobby looked at the work, however, it does need to be permitted. The pictures were taken by Bobby showing areas that would be considered to be code violations, and it goes on to explain if you have any questions, etc. cetera. Um, and here are the pe pictures that were provided by Mr. Whitmire, the inspector. Um, the first picture on your screen is uh, part of the soffit, um, which would speak to the next case, not this one. Um, and then the chimney farther down. It's farther down. Mm -hmm. Hang on. A couple more down. Right in there starts. So here is a, a picture where the collar flashing around the chimney is cracked and caulk along siding is also cracked. Um, more caulking may need to be done. Again, there's a picture of the cracked caulking. It's leaking around the chimney. Caulk is cracked along the chimney siding. So exposed nails on the ridge cap are not caulked or sealed. Um, and you can see them here in this photograph. And that's it for this hearing. So Mr. Rushing, once you received this information on October 13, have you had your men come back, uh, or 16, have you had your men come back to take care of the items that is on the first complaint here of the roof no no sir i have not but i will uh i will forthwith it's it's not a problem to do so um but as of as of now no we haven't been back at this point anybody want to 
ask some more questions. What's your schedule in getting it uh, completed? What's your schedule in getting it completed? Uh, I'm, I'm confident we can have it done by uh, Friday next week. At the latest, I said the latest, but um, I, I will get right on it to, to get some, someone there. What I'd like to do is go on to the second case also and find out what uh, actions are going to be taken before we can make a decision. That can be done, definitely. We can go yeah, ahead and hear okay the first case and then circle back to, for this one. If that's okay with everybody. So we can hear both sides. Mm -hmm. Is that okay with you, Mr. Ponte and Mr. Rushing? <laughs> Mr. Rushing, is that okay with you? Yeah. Go ahead. Yes, that, that'd be fine. Okay. Thanks, sir. Um, so, Ms. Secretary, if you'd like to tell yes, us. Yes, sir. So, the second item in regards to this complete case is Jonathan M. Rushing doing business as Elevate Roofing and Exteriors, Inc., state certified license number CRC 1332396, contractor competency board complaint number. 2311116 COM. Again, it's in regard to Rosemary Aponte, the homeowner complainant at 1425 Little Creek Drive, Pensacola, Florida, 32506. Again, proper notice was sent to the respondent. Both parties for this hearing were previously sworn uh, in the sister case, is what I'm going to say to this one, um, and they remain sworn. Um, so we'll go into uh, the other housekeeping items. Uh, Ms. Reber, was a formal complaint filed with the board in regard to this hearing? Uh, if so, what date was it filed? Uh, yes, it was filed on June 12th, 2023, and, and um, I actually split it into two cases since um, uh, it, it came into the fact of the the soffit and fascia. And um, we know that Ms. Reber was able to communicate with both the complainant and the respondent about the case. And we do know that additional documentation is attached to the agenda from both parties. Um, I just need a, re um, a, a motion that they be moved into evidence for this hearing. So moved. No, second. Second. Discussion. All in favor of moving evidence into the records, raise your right hand. All opposed, same sign. Hear none, seeing none. Motion is carried. And Ms. Reber, were you able to assign any uh, alleged violations to this particular case? If so, please state each violation and your justification. Yes, I was. Code section 1837D15C. And uh, that's based on, although I think they had to do this after the fact, the fascia and the soffit, that would have required an alteration permit. Um, Mr. Rushing um, does hold a residential contractor license, wasn't registered with our county at the time, but he has since gotten that license registered with us. It's so, at the discretion of the board. So he was not licensed when the work was done, but then obtained the license afterwards? Is that what we're hearing? No, just not. Well, he, he is state certified residential contractor. His roofing license was registered with Escambia County, but his. Not the state um, license. Yes, but his um, state residential license was not. He has now gotten all of that registered with us. And um, I did not check this morning, but he just needs to pull that permit. And that's the only code violation we found on this case. That's it, correct. If he pulls that permit and gets it inspected, Bobby's report did identify some defects with the fascia and soffit, but 
It's Un not had an official inspection. Sorry. Unfortunately, that can't be deemed a code violation at this time because there hasn't been an official inspection I say we because are. there's no permit. Yeah. So you're kind of at a catch-22 on this because you need the permit to be able to perform the inspection to cite code violations. So we, we really cannot go forward with this complaint because there's no permit under this at this particular juncture. You can proceed if you feel that there's a violation of statute or county ordinance in regard to him failing to obtain that permit. Um, that's what this particular case is involving at this time. We just can't do anything from the structural standpoint until permit's been. So, uh, Mr. Pointy, if he's willing to come in and make everything right, would would you be okay with that? Are you allowing him to do that? Yes, I want my house. Mr. Ponte, can you come to the podium? Oh, <laughs> Thank you. Just to let you know, this is televised, and, and if anybody's viewing it, they can't hear you unless you're at the podium in oh, okay. the microphone. I'm sorry. Yes, I want my house fixed. Okay. You know, it's what they got paid for. Okay. You know, and I've been patient. And I waited, and I understood COVID, you know, and all of that, and I waited for this. But it's time now. It's done. You know what? So, uh, Mr. Rushing, I'm going to ask you the same question. So you're saying that you'll be able to get some crews out there Friday. So is that uh, pertaining to both cases that you're willing to go in there and make whatever is not right, right? Correct. I think the biggest thing that has been... Uh, a sticking point on this is Mrs. Ponte has told us several times that she would pay for the wood, uh, but there's just been a concern that we would go in and and take care of all this and not receive payment. Um, and so, you know, I, I my my previous general manager was refusing, uh, as I said before, to to go out and do any more because there was concern that Mrs. Ponte was going to refuse payment. And, because the, the original contract for work was for the roof and the gutters. It was not. And then there was a, a, an addendum in there that kind of preset what the charge would be for, you know, uh, wood, wood rot. So, you know, the wood rot, uh, nothing that we did uh, on any of this, as far as wood rot is concerned, has been paid at all, uh, that, that I, that if, I'm, if I'm remembering correctly. And so... You know, it's it's not a matter. I'll, I'll come fix it. In fact, I know and have freely admitted to uh, everyone who's asked that I'm not I'm not pleased with certain aspects of some of that uh, repair. Uh, it needs to be fixed, and it's not a matter of me being willing to fix it. I just want to, uh, you know, have Miss Aponte on record to say yes. Once it's fixed, we will pay for for those repairs. And I will pull the, the subsequent permits uh, that are necessary to make sure it's fixed and go through the inspection process. Uh, and I apologize that I, I did not do that. Um, you know, it was it's one of those things. It was, uh, you know, typically in just replacing plywood, uh, you know, it's, it's not necessary. But I do understand us having to mess with some of those structural rafter tails and everything in the soffit would include a would in under Escambia County now would include that we need to pull a permit. So we'll pull the permit and go repair uh, the issues that are at bay. The only thing I will say though is those repairs are only in in conjunction with the structural components. Uh, we, you know, as far as you know, doing any kind of soffit coverings or fascia wraps or caps and things, those would be extra expenses that would have to be incurred that, uh, you know, we would, we would need to charge for. But as far as the structural components, you know, we've already put our invoice out and I won't charge anymore for the structural components. I'll go fix whatever needs to be fixed because I've already put our name and, and, and our, uh, you know, invoice to it. And so, you know, I'm willing to pull the permit. I'm willing to go out and make sure we take care of the structural components uh, there and the chimney. I have some concerns around the chimney because it looks like they didn't use a treated product. Uh, 
that needs to be addressed. Um, and so I will get someone there by the end of the next week to take care of all of those things and get it straight and pull the permit as well, of course. And uh, we will we will take care of the structural component of it. As far as the painting and, you know, the, the facial wrap and, you know, vinyl soffits or anything like that, that would have to be an extra expense. And I just don't want to leave this hearing with a misunderstanding of what we are willing to do or not willing to do. So, Mr. Ponte, are you, you understand what he's saying? What uh, portion that is under the original contract does not include the soffit gutters nor painting it. And if you done, if you wanted them to do that, that would be in addition. You understand what he's saying there? I understand, I understand that. But what I worry about is them escalating the prices again? Well, you don't have to agree. In other words, he's going to tell you an amount, and you don't have to agree to that amount. You can hire a contractor X over here. In other words, you don't have to hire him. He's just saying that if you did hire him, that would be extra than the original contract. You understand what he's saying there? He needs to be sworn this is, in. This is my son. Okay, he'll need to be sworn in. Yes, sir. You'll need to be sworn to state your name and address for the record. Robert Aponte, 1425 Little Creek Drive. Yes, ma'am. Robert Aponte, 1425 Little Creek Drive. I get what they're saying about paying for plywood, but if you look, he's charging $1,200 for nine seats of plywood. You just can't. So, I mean, uh, yes, pay the plywood like he's wanting. You, there's su suppose I do this for a living. I know how much a sheet of plywood is. And I personally have talked to Brandon and Sutton, and they all avoided my phone calls and my text messages about the situation because I do it for a living. And I was like, how are you charging $1,200 for 9 25 sheets of plywood? That's incorrect. That's 150% markup. Well, you understand that's labor and material when they charge that, right? No. A roofer typically, and I, we have some of this here, can tell you that per sheet, it's not just what you go to Home Depot, Lowe's, and buy it for. It is the actual purchase and bring it to the job, installing it. They have a package number per sheet. And it is escalated from, as a builder, I, you know, yeah. freaks me out paying that kind of money. <laughs> but it's because of what is included in it. And that's the reason why that number is escalated. Just point of reference there. Okay, it still confused me. This is twelve hundred dollars to redeck the, the roof, and they charge seventeen if you split it between the gutters. How how they do that? It doesn't make I, any sense to me. Again, I'm not going to you know, devil into their numbers. I'm just explaining that yeah. sheet of plywood is not just the cost of the material. Just to understand that part. Right. So, so if I agree, my question is: all of this time, he claims he, the roof is done, the gutters done. Where's my warranty? We went all through hurricane season. I had no warranty on my roof. Well, I cannot he, get it insured. He has uh, a warranty included in his contract with you. And that would be a, and legal can tell us, that would be a civil situation then as far as the warranty. What we look at is code violations, uh, that kind of things that goes against the Florida Building Code. And the warranty, I don't think, uh, I think that would have something more to do with you and him in a civil type situation. Okay. So, and counsel can correct me if I'm, if I'm wrong with that. Um, I'm sorry, you were telling us something? Yeah, oh, your microphone. microphone. I think that uh, what Ms. Aponte is speaking to and Mr. Rushing addressed, um, he addressed it with regard to the gutters, the general manager that he speaks about that's no longer there. There is a statement uh, in some of the correspondence uh, where he said, we're not going to do the gutter and you're not going to have a warranty on your roof. I, I believe Mr. Rushing has testified today that he asked that. Typically that statement's made if the bill is not paid in that, full and, and that's that is a part exactly of the contract. What so if you didn't for. finish your contract with him, you voided the fact of your warranty because you didn't pay your final balance. That's pretty typical in most contracts. Yeah, but Sutton told me the wood situation was taken care of, and then all of a sudden, 
you know, the, they were using my wood. Well, I've I got think pictures you've heard of their Rushing, wood put on the truck. Mr. Rushing has said today that he would send somebody out and would take care of it. The understanding is that if you ask them to do the soffit, facial, et cetera, painting, then that would be an additional to the roofing amount. And you understand that, correct? Yes. Okay. So you don't have to hire him. You can hire John Doe, you know what I'm saying? But they, it, he's just making sure that's that's what. Um, Even if they were the ones who destroyed it when they were walking around up there and pounding and you see the wood along the sides of the thing separating the soffit from the, the house. It wasn't like that after the hurricane. It, it happened after, when, after they did the roof. So, so what you're saying, Ms. Aponte, is that during the replacement of the roof covering, the workers caused damage to the soffit fascia? In the front there, in the front where it says 1425, there was a little area that the, the, the hurricane did that. In the back where the actual roof on the one side came down after the storm, yes, that area there, the fascia had separated. But if you look at the fascia coming across, fascia that has been in the rain and everything else looks wet and rotted. That fascia is all good. It's separated. See, that's in the front. It wasn't that big, okay? It was a little area. They made it when they were pulling down that other one. In the back, when it was, when it was up there, uh, when they were hammering all of that wood alongside the trim, is when the fascia was coming away from the house. And I asked him about it, and he said, well, we'll take care of it. Brenda came out there and measured it and showed me the measurement and said, well, this is what we need, this, the size we need to get. I mean, if it was from the storm, you know, I can go, but they, they did it. To clarify, in my investigative report, um, and where she's testified that Sutton told her the wood was taken care of, she alleges that that back room where that was all replaced, that that crew damaged that. And she alleges that Sutton told her they would take care of it. Yeah. I think she further alleges, if I understood correctly, so did the wood that was placed up there to do that was the Aponte's fence material because the son was working on the fence. I don't know if that's fence material, but that's part of, I think that's where the confusion with the wood comes in. Mm -hmm. Not that it's not some of the plywood on the roof, but when she says it's my wood, that's mm -hmm. what they're alleging. So council, I, I, can you guide us through, is that a building code violation or is that a, a thief <laughs> is that something that's outside of building code and more into a civil it depends if we're talking warranty that's going to be a civil matter because that's going to be a contract right. issue him and, using some of their wood that was sitting there i mean that do we know how many that, pieces do we know how many pieces civil. of wood that'd be a about. civil thing that'd be a civil it thing. was yeah. it was on the side yeah. but do we know how many pieces of lumber we're talking about i think we're talking about one by six is or the, the, no. the, the, they were long. Fence, they were, fence, fence board. Fence board. How many? How many? Three or four. Three or four. So I mean, uh, to me, Mr. Rushing, uh, you know that I don't know who your superintendent was on the job or project manager, but uh, if they're claiming that three or four pieces of the wood, I think it's a it's an easy fix. Uh, unfortunately, uh, whether or not again. Uh, it comes down to the burden of you not being on the job and you having subcontractors. Uh, you know, it becomes a issue for us that, you know, we want, we're not there just like you, but if Ms. Monte is saying that, you know, four pieces of wood were used, I think it's a business decision you need to make. And the same thing we're talking about the remaining items. Uh, what I'd like to see done is to see what it is that you're charging so that way she's well aware in advance that hey, here's what the cost's gonna be, and she can make that decision that yes, you are welcome to go ahead and send a change order and I'm agreeing to it, or she says, nope, I don't want you to do it. And then you've already given us a time that you're gonna go in there and finish any uh, issues that you have. 
Uh, hopefully this will give us enough time from our inspection crew to come back over there and take a look at to make sure there are no violations in your uh, installation or reinstallation. And what I'd like to do is to table this until the next meeting to see uh, what's happened between now and January the 6th, I believe it is. And if things haven't happened, then we as a board will take action in order to make sure that things do happen. Uh, mm -hmm. But I think right now, if we're going to go back and forth on a couple of pieces of lumber, and again, Mr. Rushing, this is a decision, a business decision you'll have to make to determine whether or not uh, can you make this go away and uh, get this job done or continue to come back again next uh, month and, you know, we go through this. So I think that's going to be my decision on uh, moving forward with this because we've heard both sides. We understand what's happening. Uh, it's just something that they're going to have to work out. But what we'll do is, uh, I don't know if I've got to make a motion not to table this until next month. Before, can I, can I before, we, real quick? before we do that, Mr. Rushing, I would like to remind you that what we have before us here is disciplinary action possible if these things are not remedied. And so it's, yeah, imp I, it's imperative, I, regardless of how much money's owed you, it's imperative that you do what's right per the code. Yes, sir. Quickly, yes, sir. So as, as far as the boards, I, I, I'm, I'm very, you know, somehow this never made it to me. This is the first I'd heard about us using their boards. I'm sorry. But if it's four boards, you know, I'm more than willing to take $100 off the invoice that would more than cover, should more than cover, you know, the expense of that. That's not a problem. And I'm more than willing to, as I said, file the, the, uh, uh, the, pa the paperwork needed to pull the permit and I'm, I'm willing to go out and make sure that we address all the structural issues. But basically when I would be done is what I'm just trying to explain so that everybody's on the same page. When we're finished, it's basically going to be a framing type inspection where, you know, the, the structural components of the house are, are complete. As far as putting in any kind of vinyl soffits, paintings, or you know aluminum fascia wraps or anything like that that would be an additional expense at this point it would probably be best for her to get someone else uh if she would like to to do that portion but as far as this this hearing is you know concerned i'm you know uh committing 100 percent to make sure that we pull the permit and fix the structural components and have it inspected and make sure everything is correct uh as far as that goes as far as you know I just didn't want to come back to this hearing and say, well, he didn't put any fascia wrap up or he didn't put any vinyl soffit up or he didn't paint the, the structural components because there's nothing in our contract whatsoever that covers any of that. It only covers the wood portions uh, that, are, that are needed. And as long as we're all in agreement with that, I don't see that there should be any problem going forward. And I'll take the $100 off the invoice for the wood that uh, she you know, it says that we have uh, used of theirs. So the inspector's report is what he's saying he will remedy, which brings everything up with us from the building code, permitting and repairing the structural areas, which is cleaning this thing up, okay? Then okay. he's also offering $100 for three boards, which is a... If you go to Home Depot or Lowe's, <laughs> you can buy my heck of a lot cheaper than that. So that's a good gesture on his part to show that $100 for three, what, $12, $15 boards, whatever it is. So he's giving you twice the price or better for that. And we'll correct everything that's on here. Anything else beyond that is going to have to be between the two of you. And if it's a civil matter, then that's, you know, that's, your, that's, that's between the two of you. And anything as far as, you know, if he does the soft or not, hiring somebody else may be your best route. That's something you'll have to decide. You and your family have to decide your own self on that. So I have a motion, I have a preliminary ahead of me here, and I would entertain this, that we postpone this for review in the January meeting to give Mr. Rushing the opportunity to come to your house with your permission you have to allow him or else we can't even go as forward with this. As long as it's not that same crew. I've got it won't the, be the same crew. He's already said that. I've got the that. building permit here. 
He's already said that, Ms. Aponte. Uh, he won't be the same proof. When they came out the second time and I told them to leave, it was hanging up on the front porch. That's where it was hanging when they started, okay? When I went in the next morning, the guy took it down and threw it behind the bushes on the other people's property. I, I apologize for any ignorance that any worker does. It doesn't look good on that's our industry. Worry, that's what I worry about. I, well, it, it, I think we have Mr. Russian's attention towards this situation, and he will be, you know, taking care of this. So we can have, if somebody wants to make a motion, I will entertain this to put it to the January meeting so we can have a chance for Mr. Russian to complete everything to the satisfaction, and then if not, we'll we reconvene to go from there. Do I have any motion? I'll second? make that motion. Motion, do I have a second? Second. So okay. I need that motion to include both cases. Uh, that needs to be a second. Correct. So I, the motion for both cases yes. uh, pertaining to um, Ms. Alte and then uh, Jonathan Russian uh, to be uh, postponed till our next uh, meeting. Thank you. Case number 2311169COM and 230669COM. I have a motion and a second. Do I have any discussion on this? No discussion. All in favor, raise your right hand. All opposed, same sign. Seeing none, hearing none. Motion has been approved to extend this from January's meeting and Mr. Rushing to be able to come to your house and take care of everything for you. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Aponte. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. And have a good Christmas. Merry Christmas to you. Yes, ma'am. You're good to go, Mr. Rushing. Thank you very much. Our next item is item three, Sean Carpenter, uh, doing business as first on-site property restoration, state certified license number CGC 1525001, contractor competency board complaint number 230. 998 COM. It's in regard to Maurice Dixon, the homeowner complainant at 8150 Pine Forest Road, McDavid, Florida 32568. Proper notice was sent to the respondent. Uh, Mr. Dixon, are you present today? Thank you. And are you going to provide testimony for this hearing? And Mr. Carpenter, are you present today? And are you going to provide testimony for this hearing? At this time, I'm going to have both parties sworn in. And just a reminder, Ms. Reber was previously sworn. Ms. Reber, was a formal complaint filed with the board, and on what date was it filed? Uh, yes, September 12th, 2023. And were you able to communicate with the complainant about the case? Yes, I was. And were you able to communicate with the respondent about the case? Yes, I was. Did the complainant provide any supporting documentation, and is it attached to the agenda as backup? He did, and it's all attached. And did the pre respondent provide any supporting documentation, and is it attached to the agenda as backup? Uh, yes, we had communication that's in there. Were any permits obtained? If so, um, when and what is their current status? Um, most of this job did not uh, require any permits. Uh, we're here about a potential need for a permit, so there are currently no permits for this project. Uh, staff would request that the documentation attached to the agenda as backup be moved into evidence. So moved. A second. Say Second. <laughs> All in favor, raise your right hand. All opposed, same sign. Seeing none here, none evidence. Motion for the evidence to be carried, moved is carried. Uh, Ms. Reber, were you able to assign any alleged violations to the case? And if so, please state each violation and your justification. Yes, I was. Code section 1837D9B. Um, that would be based around, uh, there was some work allegedly done on a shower pan um, that was not permitted. Code section 1837D9H, um, from my investigation, it, it appears that 
um, Mr. Carpenter was was not really clear on what was happening throughout this project. Code section 1837D 15C, uh, this goes with needing to have a permit uh, for the shower pan that was allegedly put in. And to circle back on that first item listed, Mr. Carpentier does not have the license to do installations of shower pans that requires a plumbing license. And as you can see, he is a registered general contractor or state certified. I'm sorry, there's a registered. A, an CGC. error on this report. CGC. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. He's a state certified general contractor. Um, Mr. Dixon, yeah. this is your opportunity to come to the podium. State your name and address for the record and uh, address the board in regard to this complaint. Maurice Dixon, 8150 Pine Forest Road, McDavid, Florida, 32568. Oh, what you um, about my complaint? I I just want it fixed, man. I mean, it wasn't done right. It was it was done illegally from the jump. I mean, I got a mess, and I've been trying to get them first on site to come out and try to make it right with me. They talking about some money that I owe them, but that would have been if the job was completed. We had damages to what they done. So that insurance company, the payee, it went through their chain of command. They got all the videos and all that other stuff, and they deemed it not uh, not good workmanship. So, I mean, <coughs> the $9,000 that he was talking about, that's what that was for. That was was left, left door and on it. We had to turn around and buy new materials and everything else. So, I mean, it's, it's molding like I don't know what right now. I mean, the damages that the GoPro did, the original guy that put it in there, that messed it up, and then they came in to try to fix it, I mean, I'm back to the same spot. The wall's going to have to be cut out. I got black mold coming from up under there. All of it's all messed up, the whole deal. But I tried to give them, uh, it's almost a, a year. Here we go again. It's, it's, it ain't been fixed. So I don't know what to say, man. Let me see if I can understand this correctly. So this was an insurance claim? Yes, sir. So, From a GoPro. So From, a company um, came in and before, yeah. did the work. And what happened was because there was defects, you had damages. So you claimed They drilled holes insurance. all over the place. Right. And it started flooding. So, I mean, they didn't line it right. It was just all dead wrong. But then but his insurance was against, company. Yeah, his insurance company. Came, yeah, and, and contracted wanted, them gotcha. out to do it. Okay. So I'm back to the same spot. Gotcha. Yeah, still all messed up. I mean, I only got one bathroom. My property, my, my house is paid for. I'm billing it out of my pocket, but I can't. I'm going backwards, man. I'm going backwards. All right, thank you. Thank you, Ms. Dixon. Mm -hmm. Mr. Carpenter, this is your opportunity to address the board in regard to the case. Please state your name and address for the record. Sean Carpenter, 4441 Soundside Drive, Gulf Cruise, Florida. We've offered to go out four or five times now. We've also offered to have the plumber that he hired go out and fix the issue that remains. The problem is we did not do any plumbing on the house, which is why we did not pull have our plumber pull a permit. Mr. Dixon terminated our contract prior to us getting to the stage of actually performing the plumbing work. The floor of the fiberglass shower was set, but it was not installed, which is the main issue. He hired a plumber called Harlow Plumbing to come and set the sink and the toilet. He didn't install and connect the shower. We didn't do that either. We didn't do any of the plumbing work. I've got an email from the adjuster based on Mr. Dixon's statements to the adjuster stating plumbing is needed. I, th that was not submitted, I don't think. 
to Miss Reap, but mainly because I found it three days ago. Um, so that was known December 22nd that plumbing was still needed. The last time we did any work, I believe, it was like December 9th of 2022. Oh my God, it okay. um, so we didn't get to the stage of performing the plumbing. If we would have, we would have had the plumber pull the permit. We would have had the inspections. But because Mr. Harlow, or sorry, Mr. Dixon terminated our contract and hired his own plumber, we did not do that. Even with that being stated, we have offered four or five times to either send our plumber out there to finish everything or to hire his plumber and reduce that from the bill that he owes us. He says that we haven't been out there to address it, but we were out there within, I believe, two days of him calling and saying it was leaking to evaluate the water damage portion of the job. So we've been very active and very reactive to the issues as, as they've been brought up. He has not advised me on whether or not he wants me to send my plumber out or to um, hire Harlow Plumbing, which is the one he used to do the other items. Without him advising me of which direction he wants to go, there's nothing I can do as far as fixing the actual issue. And the estimate that or the scope of work or the original estimate that was uploaded, that's the first scope, not the revised scope that doesn't include, it, that includes the work that we ended up not doing. There's actually a later revised invoice that is based off of when uh, Mr. Dixon terminated our contract. So it's about $4,000 less. The money that we're saying that he owes is the money that's prior to, or that we had completed prior to him terminating the contract. So let me make sure I'm understanding this. So what, your company didn't do any plumbing. Correct. And that's what was, Ms. Reber, what was the investigation? And I could only base that on there is some text communication with whomever Mr. Richard is and a lady by the name of Christine um, from Mr. Carpenter's property. And there's discussion about I've got to pick up the shower pan and put that in. Mr. Dixon alleges that it was put in. I've not had anything it has to been dispute set. This. It has not been connected. It's just like the appliance guy said. The fiberglass has been just set in place, but no yeah. plumbing has been worked Correct. to it. Yeah, just like when you get a gas stove, the appliance company can set that. Right. And then the plumber's Plumber going to comes come connected. at the very end. Or, you know, a sink. Right. When you get granite. Right. The granite guy right. attaches the sink. The plumber just attaches the sink to the plumber. Following plumbing. clarification on that. So there's an area there. Okay. Yes. And that's so, where our leak is, is or per uh, Mr. Dixon, the leak is the plumbing is not set and correctly connected to the pan. The pan so what did your company with. do then? We did a, a various amount of work. The majority of what we did was tear a bunch of stuff out from the, um, it was actually, I believe, the shower doors that leaked. Uh, and we found some other additional leaks that caused some water damage. Uh, we primarily set, as far as this goes, the shower surround, and we weren't even finished with setting that. There were still pieces missing. There were still gaps. You look at the photos, it's a in-progress work. Our subcontractor that was performing the actual work had a family emergency and was delayed. It was basically this time of year, um, almost exactly last year, and Mr. Dixon was done waiting. There was delays. We had difficulty finding people to do the work out where he lives. Let me ask a question if it's okay. Sure, go ahead. So I'm looking at the scope of work. So your company is first on site. Correct. So if I go through the detailed listing, there's plumbing work in here. So was that appointed to you to do? This is not the, this is the original scope of work, not the scope of work that we performed because our contract well, we got, was We got to go by this. So is there another document that shows that you've, Perform separate. Outside yeah, there's of this. another one that has um, a whole section of mm -hmm. items or credit items on the bottom of it. So 
And you've turned down. And Jennifer, do we have that? We do not. Yeah, so if we don't have that, we have to go by what's listed here that this is your scope of work. And that also, you hired our to price do. isn't on, our price isn't the same of what's owed. And I've never claimed that we completed that scope of work either. So, what you're saying is that, uh, such as any builder that were to do the same thing, you would hire a roofer to do the roofing and a plumber to do the plumbing Correct. and an electrician to do electrical. You just simply have not done that with the scope of work. Correct. Yeah, so I did not get not, to not that to stage that. of the and scope of it. work gotcha. because our contract was gotcha. canceled. Gotcha. So, how, it's going to be hard for us to. Um, and, and I've offered either way. I want to do what's necessary. I want to take care of the issue. Sure. We've offered. I, I've offered personally four or five times. The previous general manager for the this branch offered to go out there. You know, so I keep offering. I just don't get an answer of what what he wants done. Um, you know, there, there's certain things not applicable directly to the contract, such as, you know, he says we were hired by Next Insurance. We weren't. We have a contract directly with him. Next Insurance did call us initially, but our contract is with him. You know, so I'd love to take care of this the best I can. I just don't know how to take care of it because I he won't give me an answer of what he wants done. So this uh, text message we that we got right now from Don. That that's an email. email. Oh, that's an email. Sorry. Yes, sir. So the email that we got. This is from the insurance. It's from company. the insurance company. But is she talking about work that was done by the prior contractor, or is she talking about the work that was the, done? This by is him? right after our contract was terminated. So this is in reference to our work. Okay. And you're willing to go in and make everything right? I will have a plumber go out there, no problem. Like same thing as our last case, you were listening to it. Are you okay with allowing him to go in there and correct any deficiencies where it's acceptable to not only the insurance company, but you, based on the scope of work that's assigned to him? I mean, um, I've, I've been trying to get him to fix it all year. And what are you looking at time but this the But can I say this? Certainly. Um, I don't know where he been, but I still got the original shower pan out there. I never even threw it away just because I wanted to make sure that everybody on the same page. We went from a smaller, much smaller shower to a big shower. His contractor, whoever Mr. Richard Ward is, they, once they tore all of this stuff out of there, he had to cut my floor out and move the pipe. He moved that pipe. I gave him the, pl the three quarter inch plywood to, when he cut it out because he actually cut it too big. So, I mean, I don't know what he's talking about. They didn't touch none of that. They put that in there. And I got the pictures and the videos to show it right here. So, I mean, I don't know what he's talking about. They didn't do no plumbing. And I have zero problem getting a plumber out there or as I've offered multiple times hiring Harlow Plumbing, which is the plumber that he has used you know, for the other items. My personal opinion is we will reduce that from our bill. He likes Harlow Plumbing. That reduces any issues and takes all of that off of, you know, there being any further issues with myself. Well, Obviously, we, him and our company aren't seeing eye to eye. That, to me, makes it the simplest option. But if he doesn't like that option, I'm still willing to, you know, call one of the plumbers that we work with, have them get out there, whatever's needed, have them take care of it. And then at that time, they'd be pulling any needed permits. So what you're saying is that you have a video showing that plumbing work was being done. From, oh, this, I, from, this from the time they got fired, yes, sir. I, I have it right here if you so want to see it. One of our bigger concerns here is the code violations is what we've listed is that working without a permit. Uh, so that that I think is what we have to justify today. So if you have videos and stuff, and you know, again, uh, it's something that we have to go through the process. We don't have that currently, so we can only go by what we have that's in front of us. You want them? I've got them right here. Well, 
and, yeah, and that's yeah. I've reviewed all of our photos. I've reviewed all of his photos, all of his documentation. I've talked to the subcontractor. I was not there that time frame when he sat the the floor of the tub or the shower surround. He told me that nothing was done there. We were waiting. He was waiting on the plumber, which is what he should have done. If he got excited and got ahead of himself, that needs to be corrected. That's the whole thing about this situation. I got emails and texts between <coughs> me and Christian telling them that I need to see a supervisor out here. And it was way before <coughs> Mr. Richard even set this pan down here because it didn't look right. He tried three times, three times, and finally just cut my floor out and boom, here we go. You know, it's all, it's all lined up wrong. Misperfection everywhere. I got a big old hole in the wall where they put in brand new sheetrock. They messed it up. It, Mr. Richard and them messed it all up. I can't even put my vents in. It's more to it than this. It's way more to it than this. Brand new shower. They cut a hole in the wall and then putted it to try to hide it and then put a cap on with that. He said he wouldn't even pay for it. It's in the email. She has it. He said he wouldn't have paid for it. But he want me to pay him $9,000. That was left over. It wasn't nothing left over. That was it. Y'all job was terminated after you messed it up, dude. I've been trying to get you to work with me all, the, all year. They came out there, ran humidifiers. They knew they had did it wrong. They been out there. Come got the humidifiers and just stepped and left <laughs> my house. Didn't say nothing. So you terminated the contract, Mr. Dixon? Uh, yes, I had to. I mean, I had holes in the walls. I mean, shower leaking. I mean, yeah. So what we need then is we need proof through some means because we have a contractor saying that their people did not touch plumbing. We have an owner that says he did touch plumbing. And, and let, let me clarify. I know that we touched plumbing. We did not install plumbing. We well, install plumbing. Yeah, because right. we capped several lines. We cut things. Right. We, when we, that's normal for yes. that standpoint, but it's not, and the building inspector can help me with this, as long as they're not actually, you know, installing, installing and, and putting, you know, you can cut a pipe if you need to move something out of the way of it. Yes. And, but somebody else has got to go back and install it properly. Yes. So we understand that. But... And I could submit the revised scope where it actually, those items yeah, have been we, it, moved we need down that. to credit items instead of but I don't, positive. Do we costs. have any hard evidence? Do we have any hard evidence of actual plumbing being installed by first on-site property restoration? Unless there's more Photo, like he says on his, excuse me, on his phone that he has a video. I have two videos that Jen can present. That's just, that's based on workmanship. Do you have anything in your phone that shows Richard actually hooked it up? Mm -mm, I didn't sit there and record them like that. Okay. And I, I respect, Ms. Dixon, I'm not I saying you're wrong. That. I'm not saying you're wrong. Please don't misunderstand. We're not saying you're wrong. We're just saying that as a board, we need some kind of evidence that is, is, is expected that somebody actually done plumbing work, not just cut a pipe because, like say they were taking the old pan out and they just cut the pipe and take the pan out. Well, that's not against code, but they can't go back and reconnect it or water lines, et cetera. Am I correct saying that? Yeah. Right. Right. So I, it's kind of putting us in the awkwardness here of not having some, something to substantiate. Well, it, it, well, it states, and in, 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 um, she should have it, where Mr. Richards uh, told me he had to go and cut the pipe. Uh, he's coming today. Again, cutting the pipe, and that's cutting, allowed. Yeah, that is allowed. I mean, um, you know, doing whatever you got to do. But no, I don't have no actual failure. So it's allowed for them to cut the pipe. They just can't come back and reconnect stuff. Yeah. Plumbing. Does that but, make sense? Yeah, I understand what you're saying. Okay. But I mean, they put it all in, though. They did. 
For sure. And like I said, and that's when I, after that, I, I just stopped it. It was just, yeah, it was, it was going. And quality on. of workmanship, that's something that y'all will have to, but I, again, we're trying to go back to what's on the. Which the, the whole reason we have the, the leak is occurring is because that wasn't done, because that's what's leaking. Harlow just never addressed it, whereas our plumber would have, so. And Harlow yeah. was the one that connected it. Harlow you, didn't you hired do that. Harlow plumbing. That's Harlow ain't got nothing to do with this. No, Harlow connected the sink and the toilet. Yeah, that's all they did. Yes, they that's didn't all they do did. anything with the shower. But the they shower didn't touch the shower. To they just they did the shower. Shower's not connected, or is it connected? It's not. It's connected, but it's all it's it's off. It's a quarter inch off. It's not lined the drains, up. The, drains the pipe, the pipe, the drain pipe, and the pipe that goes. That on the uh, the shower pan that they did, yeah, it's a quarter inch off. So it's is it connected or not at this particular? It's if running. It's, it's just running down on the floor. <clears throat> Into the floor because it's okay. Yeah. Which means that they did not connect it. Well, they hey. laid the pan there, is what you're saying, but the connections haven't been made. No, how can you do that the when they already glued it in? I mean, they all they done all that. Well, that's of a that. plumber that would come in and. Make yeah, connections. no, the plumbing had to be done. Uh, had to be the plumb, you had to cut the pipe and then move it over. Okay, get it set and then put your pan down on top of that. That post that right there got to be. I mean, you can't be a sixteenth thought. So who moved the drain lines? You had a small they shower. They did. Now it's bigger, but he wasn't the first contractor that no, you filed the claim. Uh uh, on? no, this one. They did it all, man. I got the pictures. I mean, I just don't have no proof of showing that video of them putting it. Cutting Do you it have the pictures of, so when you filed your insurance claim, mm -hmm. this shower was not installed? Yes, it was. I got it right here, dude. No, it's so the, it's the I, date. I, it was a different shower. So, yeah, so when Went you filed your shower. insurance, so it was small. So you have pictures of the small shower mm -hmm. showing us that, hey, this is what I filed my claim on. Now you've got a big shower, so clearly somebody put it in there, and you're the only company that was allowed to come in and work. That will give us at least an identifier to say, okay, based on your previous shower that you filed a claim on, and now you've got a bigger shower, well, we know the owner didn't install it. And we have put in the surround. We have, did put in the floor of the uh, four-piece shower surround. We just didn't finish any of it. The plumber would have been the next one to come out to actually, actually run the finalize it, test it, make sure that there's no leaks. If there is, make any corrections that are needed. They would have been the ones to finish any of that. Yeah, but at the same time, I think you said that this has been going on for how long? I've, I've asked. Over a year. To, yeah. They, yeah, the first, like I said, so the first. You, this shower's been running water since, inappropriate since so since they touched you it. know again it goes back to uh, being a, a general contractor that we know we have a fiduciary responsibility to make sure to get the plumber out there to get it installed if we, our subcontractors have we were terminated though but no when, sir but it was already done when, Sean. When, did, when was the actual termination it was beginning already done huh? De beginning of december yeah, Last year. December. yeah, yeah. And we can't yeah. speak over each other because the reporters I having trouble sorry. thank you so last year in December, the termination happened. So between Correct. last year and now, no work is... We've offered multiple times to go out there <coughs> or to send the plumbers out there. He has not responded back accepting either one of my offers to either send my plumber or to hire his plumber. I have made both of those offers numerous times. Mrs. Reber has those emails with those offers in it. I've made that offer to him verbally. I've made the offer to his wife verbally. Never once, even verbally, did they say, okay, do this one or that one. So it's not for a lack of trying, because we've also sent our water remediation crews out there, and we performed work. They performed drying. They did work on it. We just haven't got a response on how he wants us to address the plumbing. In August of twenty of this year, 2023, is when they came out with the humidifiers so there has been that since December. What sparked that? He called and said the shower was leaking. Can I please show you guys one video? Is there any way you can? can see I, before you do that, because you guys have been all around the world, and I just need to restate where we're at. <laughs> so you went out, you tore everything out, 
Correct. You rebuilt a shower. Correct. You rebuilt a shower. You didn't put in any of the plumbing. Correct. You did not set the pan. The pan is installed, but it is not connected or set. It's a one-piece fiberglass. Okay. Yeah. I got it. So Kristen was your project for, manager. Project manager. Correct. Richard was who? Richard was one of our subcontractors. And Richard is a subcontractor to just do the framing? To do the general construction work. Okay. Not the plumbing. The plumbing would have been done by one of the two or three plumbers that we work with. And none of your plumbers went out there? Correct. Part At any the point in time? It's, it's a long ways out, and so we were not going to have the plumber go out until the very end to, to finalize all of the plumbing at once. Okay, so none of your plumbers have been out? Correct. Okay, and you're saying that they did touch the plumbing and hooked it back up? Yes, yes? ma'am. Okay. They did. They did. Okay. And I'm they saying did. if it's a quarter inch off, that's not hooked up. Like, I mean, I don't, that, they, did, they did. I mean, I can't even believe he even said this, this stuff, man. I mean, they did. They, I mean, it's all glued down and everything. It wasn't even expected. That's really what made me mad about the situation because I said, my wife said, have they been out here and inspected? I said, well, how can you inspect it when they already done put it down and it's all glued? And there wasn't an inspection because mm -hmm. there was no need for one because there was no public fault. So I'm still, I mean, I think what I'm understanding is that there was a small shower, insurance claim, hire a company, now there's a big shower. So somebody, regardless of whether the final plumbing is hooked up, like you say, or whether or not it was just installed wrong, uh, like you say, and that it's leaking, so you've been complaining that it's leaking, but nobody's done anything up until this point. Now that we have, we're sitting here in front of us, it's like, okay, did the plumbing happen or did it not happen? Right. But uh, if there's right. a larger just... shower in there and he's been using the shower, and somebody's hooked up the pan, regardless if it's off by a quarter inch, and if he's saying there's glue around it, somebody made an attempt to it's pink glue, glue to, to have that shower Sorry. installed to where it's working, and they just assumed it was working, but nobody ever checked it until the owner started finding out moisture and leaks and all that. He hit the head on the nail on the head right there. And again, it comes but, back to also. So, but right now, uh, so there's two things. You've terminated the contract. Uh, and again, uh, the contractual agreements are between the both of you parties. So, you know, uh, again, sitting from here, is there a possibility uh, for you to allow uh, them to come in and correct any deficiencies that are there? Okay. Now, if that is the case, and then, and I, I don't know what uh, allowance we have and what the board wants to do is to, we can just monitor it and bring it back next month and say, hey, okay, has everything been completely satisfactory? And you don't have to come. You just need to let staff know that everything is done. The proper permit has been pulled and it's been done. But it concerns me that you would allow a plumber to go in there. And that's what we sit here for is to be sure that these things don't happen with our general contractors, roofing contractors, electrical, plumbing, whatever, that people are not going into people's home and doing things that they're not supposed to be doing. And to me, the way it looks is that work was done, whether you knew it or not, but again, you hold the GC license. So whoever the Correct. subcontractor was, he was either directed or he just, for whatever reason, he said, you know what, I'm just gonna go ahead and install this tub and turn the water on and say, and you know what, here you go, start showering. Well, that, that was definitely not the case where we told him to start showering because we weren't done with the shower. The actual last appointment that that sub had to come out was to finish more items with the fiberglass surround. So the fiberglass surround was not completed when our sub was out there last. Um, and I agree if he did do that, which I, from what he said from the photos I have was not the case. We, no matter what, would have had the plumber come out there and then pull the needed permit at that point in time to make sure everything was done correctly. But no matter what, we were not done with that surround. It was never said, hey, it's ready to use, go and use it. So I agree that I have a, a duty to make sure that it's finished correctly. But since our contract was terminated, it was known that the surround was not completed. There was nowhere in my mind that it would have been okay, they're going to just start using this before they finalize everything that needs to be done with it. 
Okay, so if Mr. Dixon is going to allow you first on site to come out and fix it, I'm making a motion for us to table this until January, allow you to go back out, um, to go out and, and make the corrections, and, and then we'll revisit it in January. Before you get there, let me make sure that we're all on the same page, because I was unclear on this. It is, um, and I want to make sure that you have the facts as I understand them and as Jennifer has so eloquently explained them to me. So the, the shower pan's been set, oh, mm -hmm. right? It's been Correct. glued in place. Correct. Okay, this house is off-grade? Mm -hmm. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. Okay, so as an off-grade house, the plumbing would be finished from the bottom? Correct. Okay, so setting the pan is, has to be done so that the finishing work can be done inside the bathroom? Correct. So it's not, is this uncommon practice or is it a common practice to finish, do all your finish work and come back and finish the plumbing? Um, typically, we'd, the plumbing would be one of the last, the, the finishing of the plumbing would be one of the last steps. So that would be a common practice? Yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. Okay. And what you're telling this board is that you weren't able to finish the plumbing because you were terminated, terminated before that happened? Correct. And there seems to be some confusion between, um, between the two of you about what should have happened next. Okay. Correct. All right. Just want to make sure that we are all on the same page on those facts, and that's what we've got. Okay. And I'm I'm fine sending one of my plumbers out to finish any of the work. We've already we had already talked to him. We had already had him ready to go out there. They already knew everything about it prior to us making that offer to Mr. Dixon. Or again to hire Harlow. I'm fine either direction to make sure that it's taken <coughs> care of and and the complete. plumbing is rectified. Ms. Reaver. Yeah, I, I apologize. I don't want to keep going in the weeds. Um, however. The testimony's been the home, that the shower was not ready to use. Um, the Dixons were in a hotel for four months and had to be out of the hotel. The insurance told him, we're now going to stop paying for your hotel, had to be back in the home. So I'm not sure when the termination exactly took place. But you move, if, if y'all could talk about when you got back in the home, I didn't see anything that said the shower wasn't ready. You According did to, say. I don't have the exact dates. I know that the appointment that our subcontractor was not able to make due to a family issue was to do more work on the surround. So that, reading through the text messages, reading through all the messages, that was one of the specific reasons he was going out there was to do further work on the surround. According to the report, Ms. Uh, Reber, the repairs started in September of 2022 and it was canceled in December. Both of them have said in December. So you have October, November, you have about three months there before they were terminated. And I guess he was in the motel for four months, however many months he was in the motel, but, but that was that continued after he had terminated terminated their contract. But that was just very shortly. I terminated them towards the end of December. Because yeah, I had just, to be out in January. I'm just using yes, months, sir. you know, because I don't see an exact date yes, of sir. September either. It could have been the middle, beginning, it was the yeah, right. wherever it was at. So... They I mean, only, uh, right. we, they only, we was only supposed to be in the motel two weeks. They guaranteed us that. Two I understand. Weeks. I understand. Forward. Um, chair, I hate to interrupt. I know I need we, to move we this can, forward. we can circle around this, yeah. you know, and but the, I do have a board member that I, needs to leave. And um, I also have a motion on the table from her as well. So right. I need to entertain and that, that was my point. She needs to leave. I'm, but I'm, her that's why I'm table. trying to wrap everybody's brain here real quick. I have a motion on the floor to move this to next month to give an opportunity for the complainant and the subject to be able to work things together and get it finished out. Do I have a second to that motion? Second. Okay. All in favor, raise your right hand. All opposed, same side. Seeing none, hearing none. Motion has been approved, and Ms. Reber can help you too, if need be, with any other evidence of anything before the next meeting. If it's necessary, hopefully it won't be. Thank you guys very much. Thank you. Thank y'all. Okay. Let's move on to disciplinary. Uh, Miss Mary is going to exit uh, the board. She has a, a previously scheduled meeting she yeah. has to attend. Yeah, we have uh, several that's going to have to leave here in the next 
we have to be mindful that if we have another person leave, we no longer have a quorum. At 11 so, o'clock, we... At 11.30 sharp, I have to be out of here. Maybe right. 11.40. I have to be out of Right, by so let's be mindful of, of that as we move into these hearings. Okay. Uh, our next item for disciplinary hearing is James B. Freeman doing business as Freeman Roofing State Registered License Number RC 0058058, Contractor Competency Board Complaint Number 230670COM. It's in regard to Nick and Chloe Sexton, the complainants at 101 South F Street, Pensacola, Florida, 32502. This is located in the city limits. I think everybody is familiar with this case. Uh, I know that proper notice was sent to the respondent, and I see that the Sextons as well as Mr. Freeman are all present today. Are you all going to provide any testimony uh, for these cases, for this case? Yes, sir, and Mr. Freeman, yes, sir. If you could all, if you could both be sworn in at this time. Yes, sir, if you would also be sworn in. Thank you. Um, staff would request at this time that the backup documentation and testimony provided at the probable cause hearings be moved into evidence. So moved. Second. All in favor, raise your right hand. Opposed, same sign. Seeing none, hearing none. Motion has been approved. Um, Ms. Reber, was any additional documentation provided after that he last hearing? Um, I received an email from the building official in the city yesterday. Um, that is not included in that agenda. You, I have copies if you need them. I, I don't, I'm, not, I'm not sure how relevant. So I'm going to read is. that into the record okay. real quick, and, Please, and thank you. Christy is going to pass out this document. Thank you. Um, hey, Melissa, I just got off the phone with uh, Nick Sexton regarding the roof issue with Freeman. I understand that the case is going back to the board soon and Nick was saying that you may need a code section or sections for violations. If that is the case, the roof is in violation of 2020 Florida Building Code Building Section 1506.1 for not complying with the manufacturer's installation instructions. 1506.1 scope states that the requirements set forth in this section shall apply to the application of roof covering materials specified herein. Roof coverings shall be applied in accordance with this chapter and the manufacturer's installation instructions. Installation of roof coverings shall comply with the applicable provisions of section 1507 regards Jonathan. And that is the building official of the city of Pensacola. Thank you. Staff requests that that additional documentation be moved into evidence. I have a motion. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor, raise your right hand. All opposed, same sign. Seeing none, hear none. Motion carried. And um, at the probable cause, hearing uh, the board determined that was there was probable cause to believe that the respondent violated code section 1837 D9H. Uh, this item has to do with failure to supervise construction activities. Uh, it was referenced that he did not correct his employees pro improper installation of boots, improper installation of flashing, and additional damages that resulted during the attempt to make corrections to the deficient roof. Um, Mr. Ms. Sexton, this is your opportunity to address the board in relation to this code item, please. And to provide an update, because at the last hearing, I believe they, they wanted to get an update from yes. you guys. Nicholas Sexton, 110 Shoreline Drive, Gulf Breeze, Florida, 32561. Um, we have gone the whole 30 days, and we have not seen any action taken by Freeman Roofing at all. Um, the attorney did stand up here and say that they were going to get an engineer and make action that week. That's what he said. So no action has taken place. We haven't heard from the Freemans. Um, our lawyer has not heard from the Freemans on any action to take place. Um, we still have paid them our $89,000. We've sp spent $6,000 with Arcadia.
because we have to have some engineers say something. They aren't providing it, so we went ahead and moved forward with that. But we have a roof. We are operating a wedding venue without a roof that can complete the permit without being taken off. Hundreds of people are going in this venue. We need to take action immediately to get our roof fixed. It's like we have spent so much time and money fixing this wedding venue. The roof needs to be finished. We've been doing this for six months now. Mr. Freeman stood up here at the maybe two or three meetings ago and said, y'all tell me what to do and I'll do it, if y'all remember him saying that. So we're still trying to get him to admit that he's going to do what y'all tell him to do. And I would recommend that we bring out the Arcadia report unless he has an engineer plan right now to say this is what his engineer says. Um, we just want our roof fixed. It's $89,000 and the roof is completely wrong and has to be taken off is my understanding. I just don't want to continue to do this for more months. Y'all have seen us, you know? We keep saying the same thing over. We just want a roof fixed. It's, I don't know how much longer. It's, how are they able to continue to go do other jobs when Miss Mary said, I would recommend that you guys focus on the sex and stop worrying about your other projects and taking on other projects and get their roof done. Nothing has been done since the last meeting. We're here and I'll be back at the next one. But it's like, please take action today. Ask them to do the roof and have it done before the next meeting. Do you have any questions for me? I think the letter from Mr. Bilby. I have one question. Uh, in the initial contract, you knew that they were going over the existing roof with a retrofit panel, correct? You did know that, right? Yes. Yeah, so I had asked him um, when he came out, I emailed him on their Facebook and said, hey, we have a wedding venue. Can y'all do a roof over roof? Right. You didn't want to remove the old roof because of y'all were working in that. So from the beginning, you did know that it was a retrofit. So I did not you... know it was a retrofit. What I had asked was to get, um, I said, sir, what I saw on YouTube was they use metal purlins. They screw the metal purlins down and then they put another roof over top of that. Because by that's... code, you can go over existing roof one time uh, yes. on there. Yes. So, uh, um, but in the Arcadia now, report. Regarding it's... to the installation, I don't know. But as far as code goes, you can go over existing roof one time. Okay. So you can but go over shingles, you can go over metal, did, you can go over... Did y'all look at the Arcadia report, though? It says... I, I looked at it, okay. but it's, that's going back to, well, it's better to take the old stuff off, start all over. For sure. And, and if you would have said... Correct, we, but if I could, just a, just a moment, if I could, just a moment. We have a conversation that's going on over here that, that is also adding... Mr. Freeman, to Mr. Freeman, thank you, sir. And if we can slow down between the two of you okay, okay, and let I'm each sorry. one well, answer, that anyway, way the I mean, court reporter... Okay, so just from the beginning... As I was set, saying... So the Please court reporter, okay. he's right yeah, now talking. Just from the beginning, all of uh, y'all, you were okay with him going over the existing roof. Yes, okay. yes, I was fine okay. with that. That's, that's all. That's all. That's okay. all. Okay. Anybody else have any questions, Mr. Sexton? But I did want it to be up to code and finish out the permit if we were going to do. You know, I didn't just hire anybody. He's been in business for forty-two years. Uh, we understand that. We do. I okay. understand that. All right. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Mr. Freeman, would you like to approach the podium? Let's start with, can he come up, Rafiq? He was sworn. Oh, he was the one that came in oh, last just, time. Has he been sworn in? He was. He was. Okay, he came up last time. He can address the reason we hadn't been back out there. Uh, from my understanding, we were told we can't go back there until we have everything ready, right? No, sir. No. We were told what the inspector said you're supposed to do. That's what you were supposed to do. We, you were supposed to have that completed okay. by this yep. meeting or else we're today ready to do disciplinary action. Yes, okay. sir. Because this has not been done according to the inspector. Okay, I got it. I got it. Okay. Yesterday I called Mr. Uh, Billsby at the city. Billsby? Mm -hmm. Yeah, Billsby because my people that's supposed to be writing the letter for us the people we bought the materials from is being snowed up under. And I, I got Biz, I got him to send me what had to be on there. And he did not say that what's there cannot be fixed. Okay, we done been down there chains flashing, we done done cleaning of the roof, we done replaced some screws and all that. I was down there, I go down, what I did is I went whenever they was doing one thing. Okay, and I showed them how I wanted it done. Okay, they did that one thing. They don't need me sitting there if I didn't show them once how to do it. 
Okay, then I would leave. I can't just sit on a job site. I understand. Okay, then Flores, Flores has been with me 18 years. He's running a $3.2 million job at Herbert Field right now. Okay, doing a standing scene metal, I mean a floating standing scene metal. So if he can do that, he should do this roof. Okay, uh, the deal is he was over this job. He's, he's uh, my, one of my head guys. And uh, he, he has uh, replaced pretty much everything, got it there with uh, erasers, like the manufacturer said. Yeah, we went through that last month. Okay, okay. But not all to, I got. Not to be rude, I'm just saying we Okay, were... the thing has got a crown in it, mm -hmm. a little crown. It did not crease the metal, none. So the manufacturer is getting me a letter right now that that's approved. Okay. But that my manufacturer is Exceptional Metals. They bought their material from MCBI. So they, it's having to go from here to there to there. And he had then sent it over, so I called him yesterday because there was some stuff said about it couldn't go over wood, and that was wrong because they told me, oh, yeah, it goes over wood. And uh, so so it's a retrofit system, and... Uh, and I will have all that. Uh, I told him to rush it, and he did answer. Uh, my guy with uh, exceptional metal, he did answer back. Yeah, it could go over that kind of metal. It can't go over the wood, and it's not a manufacturer warranty. It's not a manufacturer. A manufacturer warranty, you have to use everything from that right. manufacturer. If it, it's not that way, it's just a. It's not a system warranty. Okay, so I can use anything I want to on it. Well, you I'll understand the, the inspector. Yes, sir. The chief uh, building inspector is saying that it is not applied he, in accordance with the manufacturer's installed instructions. No, uh, ben, I got him straight on that yesterday. Well, this is his letter from yesterday. Yep. And okay. you know, said, okay, you've had 30 days and now the last minute we're finding that you've still got letters coming, et cetera. Mr. Yep. Freeman, we can't keep waiting. Okay, do what you got to do. We just, I mean, you, you've put us into a <laughs> do corner. Do what you got to do. I'm, I'm just saying you've put into a, to a corner here where you had 30 days to go out and do this There's stuff. There's nothing y'all can do anyway. I'm a CC company. This license was bought up under a CC company. This permit. Uh, Ms. Council, is, is there anything that we can do here with this um, uh, disciplinary, or do we have no... Uh, no? You... This is an RC license. This is your no, locally no, registered. No, what the permit was really thought on. We have an RC. We have two licenses. Then we wasted months. That's not very good. Well, that's in the city. So I don't I don't have access to the city's okay. permitting records. That would We'll get you the permit over to you. I'm looking at the permit on the city says RC0058058. Okay, we don't even have that license no more, but uh, okay. It's still registered with us as well. Oh, okay. They told me it was on a CC mm -hmm. license. But whatever you can do, go ahead. I mean, uh, I've been trying, and uh, I've been sick for the last two months, and I told Mr. Uh, Nick that not too long ago, but uh, that ain't a big deal with me to do what you got to do. Do you understand what we're saying, Mr. Freeman, that we just, you know, we we gave you another 30 days from the last time, and nobody... No, I know what y'all going to do. Y'all going to take, just like I told the city yesterday, y'all take sides with the customers, just like Better Business Bureau does. And I'm just, I'm just... Uh, about to get ready. I think to quit. that's an unfair okay. assessment okay. because we've right. we've uh, we have sit here even today and gave opportunity for yeah. people to work things together. So yeah. I, I I feel like we try to be fair, Mr. Freeman. I I, I do feel like we try to be. Yeah. yeah. Nobody's perfect. Not you know. But I feel like we try to evaluate. Well, him. he's not going to be happy till the whole roof is torn. And, off and that's going to be a civil thing between the well, two of y'all. Yeah. That has nothing to do with us today. Yeah. What we have to do with is code violations. And and just to remind Mr. Freeman, this complaint was filed back in June, yeah. and this has been to several hearings. Yeah. Um, That's what I'm saying. We've been we're, we're boxed in to making decisions today. Okay. Anything else you'd like to address, this, Mr. Freeman? 
Huh? Anything else you would like to address? As I'm with? through with. Okay. Thank you, guys. Okay, so okay. our options. So your op <laughs> I'm being asked two questions at the same time. Sorry, Sorry I apologize. Um, so you're going to make a determination in regard to this count that's being presented to the board. Um, and then you would determine a penalty, and your penalty guidelines are, are listed in item 13 of the administrative complaint complaint. Um, so at this time, it would be, if you don't need to hear anything further from, from either party, would be to make a determination in regard to count one. So I have a motion from someone concerning count one, uh, the code violation of failure to supervise construction activities. I'll make a motion uh, for count one, failure to supervise construction activities. According to Escambia County Code Section 18-37D9H. What? And the penalty to be uh, you know, a maximum of a thousand and a minimum of two fifty of five hundred dollars. Five hundred dollar fine. And along with that is the options of <clears throat> suspension or revocation of authority to obtain the Build a permit or authority to be limited a permits, license, revoke. No, sir. No, sir. In this count, it only lists, in, uh, within this penalty. count, it only lists for a first violation $250 to $1,000 and or probation. Now, in that further paragraph, it does list all of the options by the board, but for this particular count, it is only... Uh, for, so, for that. Yeah, so the, uh, the motion would be for $500 and no probation because we know that Freeman Roofing has got multiple roofing jobs out there and uh, we don't want to affect that. Okay, I misunderstood what was read, what was written here because it seems to me it keeps going on. Yeah. Yes, sir, just to clarify, and I, I understand so what Mr. I understand what Mr. Lister is There's saying. There's a motion on the floor, sir. Um, further, within the administrative complaint, it does talk about what all this board can do to a party. But for this particular account, it's just this. It is just I'm what fine is with it. I just there. make yes, sure sir. follow the guidelines. Yes, okay. Yes, sir. So we have a motion on the floor for finding in violation of Code One with a fine of five hundred dollars. Do I have a second? Second. A second. Do I have any discussion? Anybody like to? All in favor, raise your right hand. All opposed, same sign. Did you not vote either way? Oh, I didn't see your hand. Excuse me. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry, I didn't see it. There's no opposed. Seeing none, hearing none, this motion has been approved for violation of count one with a fine of $500. Yes, sir, Mr. Chairman. Um, the next item that could be addressed is restitution. Um, I haven't personally received any information in regard to a restitution amount. Um, the Sextons are present. If they wish to present or ask for restitution uh, from the board, they would need to come and address the board in regard to that matter. But we also need time to review that, so. Correct, so if they had any supporting documentation, they, they need to provide that to yes. us. And, and can you just tell me more, what, what's the restitution part? So that is, um, if you feel like you are owed money in, in regard to this Well, the main thing project. is that we closed out the permit. We did uh, do a discrepancy with the credit card company. They gave us our money back. Melissa Freeman, his daughter, sent into the credit card company that they passed the permit. So the money was given back to them since the permit passed. But then, right immediately after, the permit was reopened. They have all our money. Um, I think it would be best until, I mean, Mr. Freeman walked out on y'all like he's walked out on us. That's how this whole situation's been. I just feel like it would be best for them to give us our $45,000 back until they complete the roof. It's like, that would be, I mean, I'm fine with them keeping our initial money, but he still didn't say if he's planning on fixing the roof. It's like, 
I don't understand what the plan is. We continue to come back, and I just want to know, like, does he have a plan to fix the roof, or is it just like, because even if the metal is allowed to be on there, it says that they overuse screws. Um, you can't just over, over screw it and fix that. It's so, like there's going to be holes everywhere. Right. Um, and also, we did have the other uh, probable cause from last meeting that was up there, and you guys said we were going to postpone that until we heard from the city officials on code violations, which we got today, but I didn't see the probable cause on the agenda today. Um, because whatever he sent that that he sent me, he didn't send it until yesterday. Okay, so the agenda how, posts okay, on Friday. So, okay. We read it into the record today. Okay. So um, your options are, uh, you know, bring back restitution what you feel uh, that the damages are that you're claiming that's happened. Is it possible today. first to ask all our money back? Uh, look, you have to make the presentation, and okay. we have to make the determination you guys based on the evidence on that. that's provided to us. And, um, and at like the next deal? meeting, um, since they got the $500 fine this time, at the next meeting, is it another fine or do they get their permit stopped? So let me let me clarify that for you. Uh, the probable cause, the additional probable yes. cause that you were speaking about, um, it, since we have that information um, today, we will queue that up for another probable cause hearing and then okay. they'll make a determination in regard to alleged violations. Okay. So that will be a probable cause hearing. You could also, if at that time, bring back restitution for, for this item. All right. And it won't be disciplinary at that time okay. because it, it's required And if we ask for restitution, um, are they allowed to just stop working? Like, what, how does that, I mean, if I ask for money back, if they have my full payment, and we have a roof. If I ask for money back, are they allowed to just walk away? We can't guarantee. That's, that's, yeah, yeah, we can't guarantee. That's a anything. civil matter. Yeah, so okay. we can just implement and so it's, make a if decision. If we're doing a civil case, it may be best to just ask for all our money back, and then they figure the lawyer figures out what to do after, because the roof on there that we paid eighty nine thousand dollars for is no better than the roof that we had originally. It leaks. It's seeping water. All the foam's incorrect. So I feel like yes, I would like to have all our money back. Because I'm, I'm, we're hiring a lawyer, and we're going to have to hire another company to come fix the roof. Because they decided that, I mean, it's been six months. I don't see them coming to, mm -hmm. to fix the roof. I mean, we're still talking about cleaning the rust off the roof. We're way beyond that. Again, uh, that would be something that you'd have to great. go with. Um, and the letter you got from Jonathan Bilby that we read, is that enough from him to move to... That's to fill accurate. the probable cause? That's what you needed? That's correct, sir. Okay, great. Mm -hmm. All right. Just, I appreciate just, everything y'all have done. I definitely think you guys are on both sides. Because I wouldn't be here today if you took Jimmy's side. It's like we would have, Jimmy, you did the roof good, closed deal. I think y'all have handled every case correctly. Um, but somebody that's going to walk out on you, they walk out on other customers. Bad management is not just happening on our roof. You know, They are running around with 200 permits that I've heard of in the city, and they're continuing to mismanage. You've heard, you've heard from them. Thank so you. I appreciate it, guys. Thank you for hearing Thank me. You. Thank, you. Thank you, Nell. For the record, he, he did refer to um, Mr. Freeman leaving the room, and, and that just needs to be on the record that he was present and that he, exi he exited the room, and I appreciate you bringing that up. He exited the room before the determinations were made on the count, um, just for the record in case there's any appeal. So, so just based on the communications that have, and testimony that we just had, I, I would assume that the restitution portion of this would be continued to next month. Correct. Okay. Right. Um, at this time, uh, we need a recommendation to the CILB. I entertain a motion for recommendation of. At this time, we'll say no further action. Okay. No further action. We just need a, a motion. That's right. I need a motion. Yeah. A second a to motion. it. Motion with no further action. Yeah. Mr. Mike, uh, all in favor, raise your right hand. All opposed, same sign. Seeing none, hearing none, motion carried. Thank you, guys. Thank you, sir. Our next item is John C. Fortner doing business as Fortner's Home Improvements Incorporated, state registered license number RC 29027151, contractor competency board complaint number 2310111 COM. It's in regard to James Scott doing business as JHB Auto Parts, which is Napa Auto Parts. They're the complainant at 9450. 
North Century Boulevard, Century, Florida. Uh, I think the board is familiar with this complaint and proper notice was sent to the respondent. This was a continued hearing as well. I believe a representative for, um, uh, Chris Fortner. for Fortner is present. Um, is Mr. Scott Cook present? Uh, so the complainant is not present. Um, I'm going to have you sworn in since you're going to provide testimony for Mr. Fortner. I do. Good morning, everyone. Um, if, let me do some housekeeping and then we'll get right to it, okay? Um, the backup documentation and testimony provided at the probable cause hearing, if I could have that moved into evidence for this hearing. So a motion. A second. Second. We have a motion to second. All in favor, raise your right hand. All opposed, same sign. Seeing that here, no motion approved to carry evidence. And Melissa, did we receive any further documentation after that hearing? No additional documentation. And so at this time, if you could provide an update to the board in regard to this case, that would be great. State your name and address for us. Yes. Right. Um, my name is Jennifer Panizo, and it's spelled Y E N I F E R. Uh, last name P A N I Z O. Um, address is 3849 James Estoval Street, Pensacola, Florida, 32526. I am the um, operations manager for Fortner's Home Improvement, and I'm here on his behalf today since he is on a job site today. Um, after our last meeting, um, we actually met with um, both Mr. Cooks and outside of this door and um, informed that we needed to go ahead and have the permit reinstated, that we needed a new NOC um, signed and notarized. And since I am a public notary, I could actually witness the signature and have it completed for us to submit a new permit application. At that moment, they actually took the form um, that was, you know, empty. Um, we filled out with our information, but um, empty for them to go ahead and sign. And they told me that they told actually both of us um, that they'll get back with us uh, in regards to sign that form. Um, that they had to discuss it with whomever. I'm sure probably an attorney or somebody. Uh, to this moment, we have not received that form back. So I would love to go ahead and apply for a permit, but I can't do any inspections until I actually have the proper documentation. It takes me seven minutes to complete a permit online. It's not rocket science, but I can't do it without the proper information. Um, from that moment, also on the third of um, the third of November, we actually um, went. Uh, my boss, myself, and uh, Louis, which is a representative on the commercial side from Gulf Eagle Supply, to the actual job to take exact dimensions of where all these couplers were and how we needed to submit that drawing for the um, taper system to actually review this because that's one of the biggest issues. Um, so they went out there. Uh, we received one of the quotes from what the cost of the material will be on the 21st of November. So it takes them a few, a few times since it has to go through engineering. And uh, we received an additional quote because it was a tapered and also the uh, flat roofing system. Um, on the 27th, our office was actually closed due to the Thanksgiving holiday uh, from the week of Thanksgiving. We were all, at least I was off. And um, we're still reviewing all of this information um, since these two quotes just for the material alone were above $70,000. And we're still 059, and that's not including any labor. And with all of this, we're needing to have, you know, my main reason today is to ask for a continuance on this case, since um, we're still needing to decide if, even if after, you know, my boss goes and gets a loan and, you know, tries to make all of this right, if this will even please the homeowners. Makes sense. Um, so just to bring it to the board's attention, part of this is that the permit is expired and there has been no effort made to reinstate that permit. So you don't need the NOC to reinstate a permit. It's just you'll need it before you call for your final inspection. Okay. So then... And I, I talked to Mr. Fortner mm -hmm. just before the holidays. Yeah and told him that and he said he'd get it reinstated right after and, and that's not a problem because you know i we have access to all of that um so it would just 
the, the only thing is that as of right now, I can go ahead and do a permit for, I can put Josie, you know, brand, but what we're finally deciding with the homeowner, what they're wanting for us to do, it's still up in the air at this moment. And they're not here either today. So what are we doing? <laughs> Trying to make everybody happy, but. Does the board want to entertain a continuance? That was going to be my question. Do we do a continuance to? Uh, it's my understanding that they have requested a continuance. Yeah. So do I have a motion for continuance? Mm -hmm. I'll make a motion to continuance till the next uh, meeting. Do I have a second for it? Second. Okay. All in favor, raise your right hand. We'll pull the same sign, seeing none here, none. Motion is carried for continuance to next month. Unless you guys have any other suggestions, I'm just. Well, just keeping in mind that the continuance of the next board meeting, if nothing happens, and uh, again, there's a fiduciary responsibility to have to make an attempt. Of course. And then, of course, if staff don't hear from the uh, the Napa owners, then we'll understand where it's coming from. But you're still in, you know, you have code violations or whatever the violations are. So I would Which try will to be make mainly a bigger the attempt permit, to get, get you know, things done. Yes, okay. And, get things and, done. and, you know, most likely, um, you know, and I feel like, you know, I'm going to ask this advice from you guys, but, like, I would just try to get it reinstated so we still have a valid permit. And then once we do what the final decision from the cooks are going to be, then we can do a revision. Would well, that? That would be accurate. So what you want to do is get this permit reinstated. Yeah. Um, the permit has the original scope of work on mm -hmm. it. Then you can come back and revise it. Technically, you're currently in violation of not having an active permit um, because it's expired. So to get you on the right path, reinstate the permit. We can always revise it once you get that re revised Florida project approval number. I, I feel like that's the safest thing, and I'll just... I will not leave here until that's done. So that will be taken Thank care of today. You. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yes, yeah, not a problem. Have a great day. You too. Oh, we got one more. Okay, one more. Yes, sir. Um, this one is Jonathan C. Harrington doing business as REO Construction and Repairs, LLC. Uh, state registered license number RR2828120019. Uh, contractor Competency Board Complaint Number 2309100COM. It's in regard to Anthony Rojas, the homeowner complainant at 3860 and 3900 Ashcraft, Century, Florida 32535. Proper notice was sent to the respondent. Uh, Mr. Rojas, are you present today? Yes, sir. And are you going to provide testimony? And Mr. Harrington, are you present today? Uh, Mr. Harrington is not present. Um, at this time, I'm going to have Mr. Rojas sworn in. Um, staff would request that the backup documentation and testimony provided at the probable cause hearing be moved into evidence. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor, raise your right hand. All opposed, same sign. Seeing none, hearing none. Motion approved to carry evidence in the record. And Ms. Reber, was any additional documentation provided after that probable cause hearing? There was, and it's in the record. So staff would request that the additional documentation attached to the agenda as backup also be moved into evidence. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor, raise your right hand. All opposed, same sign. Seeing none, hearing none. Motion to carry evidence in the records approved. And Mr. Rojas, um, in an effort, because I know we need to have another board member that needs to leave really quickly, um, I'm going to read with in the admin complaint the actual counts that were found at the last hearing. And if we could just stick to those, uh, that that would help. Um, the only thing, um, when I was looking at this document, I was sort of missing the uh, count two, three, and yeah, uh, one to four. Yeah, it, it seems that it was scanned in incorrectly. Let me get it from the... I apologize. I'm just 
pulling up my Word document, actually. Mm -hmm. It was on the last one, too, Melissa. It's okay. Well, I'll explain it later. Um, the board determined that there was probable cause to believe the respondent violated Code Section 1837C11, 1837D9B, 1837D9D, 1837D9H, 1837D9J, and 1837D15B. Um, if you'd like, we can go through these one by one, which should expedite the process. Um, so count one, uh, code section 1837C11, uh, finding that the contractor is guilty of fraud, deceit, gross negligence, incompetency, or misconduct in the practice of contracting. Uh, the board cited that they received construction loan disbursements for the project and failed to pay for labor and materials resulting in the homeowner paying additional money for services. Uh, Mr. Rojas, do you have anything to add in regard to that? Um, the only one that comes to mind is uh, he was paid for uh, the plumbing work. Um, he certified that he was that he did the work and it was 100% completed. Um, it turned out after inspection that it wasn't complete. Right. So if the board would like to go ahead and make a determination in regard to that. So you entertain a motion for that? So I'll make a motion uh, in uh, violation on count one. Scambia County Code Section 18-37C11. To find the contractor is guilty of fraud, deceit, gross negligence, incompetency, and misconduct in the practicing of contracting. With the with a penalty of uh, two thousand five hundred dollars. Do you have a second? Second. All in favor raise are any question? All in favor raise your right hand. All opposed, same sign. Seeing none, hearing none, motion is carried. Okay, so count two, um, contracting beyond the scope of practice allowed by the license with no safety hazard. It was cited that he performed roofing work without having the re required license uh, to do so. I mean, that, I think that one's self-explanatory. Yeah. So I'll entertain a motion. Make a motion for count two uh, in violation of contracting, sorry, in Scambia County Code section 18-37 D9B, contracting beyond the scope of practice allowed by license, no safety hazards, with a first violation fine of $500. Second. Any discussion? All in favor, raise your right hand. All opposed, same sign. Seeing none, hearing none, motion has been carried. Thank you. Um, our next item was count three, contracting beyond the scope of practice allowed by license where a safety hazard is created. Uh, the board cited that he performed electrical work without having the required license to do so. I entertain a motion. Make a motion for count three in violation of Scambia County Code Section 18-37D9D, contracting beyond the scope of practice allowed by license, a safety hazard is created with a violation of $2,500. Second. Any discussion? All in favor, raise your right hand. All opposed, same sign. Seeing none, hear none, motion is carried. All right. Our next item, count four, failure to supervise construction activities. Uh, board cited he failed to monitor the incorrect installation of materials by employees, resulting in deficiencies. I'll entertain a motion. Make a motion for count four, Scambia County Code Section 18-37D9H, failure to supervise construction activities with a penalty of $1,000. Second. Any discussion? All in favor, raise your right hand. All opposed, same sign. Seeing none, hearing none, motion is carried. Uh, okay, count five, uh, failure to notify the residential property owner of the recovery fund. Um, 
it was cited that he uh, did not have that notification within his contract about the recovery fund. Make a motion for count four. Five. Five. Camp, oh, sorry, count five as Camby County Code violation. 18-37D9J, failure to notify a residential property owner of the recovery fund with a fine of $500. Second. Any discussion? All in favor, raise your right hand. All opposed, same sign. Seeing none, hearing none, motion carried. Count six. And then count six, uh, proceeding on any job without obtaining the applicable local building department permits and or inspections. This one was failure to obtain the inspection um, on the alteration permit. We'll make a motion for count six, Scambia County Code Section 18-37D15B, proceeding on any job without obtaining applicable local building department permits and or inspection, failure to obtain inspections with a fine of $250. Second. Any discussion? All in favor, raise your right hand. All opposed, same sign. Motion is carried. Um, I need a time frame in which these fines have to be paid and what should happen should they not be paid. Make a motion for the fines to be paid in 90 days. And what happens? No. And if that's not? Uh, we, we can make a revocation of license. Revocation of license. Revocation of license. Second. Any discussion? All in favor, raise your right hand. All opposed, same sign. Seeing none, hearing none, motion is carried for penalties. Our next item um, is a restitution determination. Um, and Mr. Rojas can speak to that. I believe there is a request for restitution, correct? Yes. Uh, it's that uh, last document there. The last document. Um, so pretty much this document, um, it was created by my HUD consultant, uh, the new one. Um, he went through each line item that uh, was paid out and uh, is pretty much ordering that each of those line items be paid back to the construction account, back to the bank. So um, the total of this would be $56,916 and 98 cent, is that yes. correct? Okay. And you said this would be paid back to HUD? Uh, back to the, uh, back to Penny Mac. Okay. What was that total again, Jennifer? $56,916.98. So I'll make a motion for restitution to be paid back of 56916.98. And can you please include a time frame and what should happen? It also put 90 days on there. And what are our options if the payments are not made? Um, so you can always say that you're going to bring it back to the board. Okay. Um, or you can do suspension, revocation, your normal items. All right. So we've already did revocation on the first, right? So we'll mm -hmm. do revocation on this one also. Okay. So your motion is um, ordering restitution in, in the amount of $56,916.98 to be paid within 90 days. If it should not be paid, it would be revocation of license. Correct. Thank you. Do I have a second? Second. Do I have any discussion? All in favor, raise your right hand. All opposed, same sign. Seeing none, hearing none, motion is carried. Our last item is a recommendation to the CILB. I have somebody recommend that all the information from today be sent to the CILB. Make a recommendation that all the recommendations that we've made be sent to the state. And and what would you ask that they do? So you ha your options are uh, no further action, suspension, assess a fine or fee, uh, revocation of registration. I mean, you ha you have several options available to you. So, if all the payments are made then there's no further action. But if our, all the restitution hasn't been paid, then it would be recommendation of suspension of license. Okay. Let me get <laughs> Second. Okay. All in favor, raise your right hand. All opposed, same sign. Seeing none, hearing none, motion is carried. And that is it for this agenda item. 
Thank you, Mr. Rohan. Thank you. Thank you. Is there any other business that we're missing? As, as far as agenda items, no, but I do want to tell everybody Merry Christmas Thank you. and Merry Happy Christmas New Year, Eve. and we will see you after the first of the year. Thank Merry you, guys. Christmas. Thank you, everybody, for being here today. Merry Christmas, everybody.